Oh, I guess it's good afternoon because we're now 12 o'clock Eastern here in Sarnia, Ontario, Canada. And it's also 12 o'clock where my special guest co-host is joining me today. Stephen Healy is off gallivanting somewhere. Apparently he has a good excuse for not being here, but that's okay. We'll, we'll forgive him. Uh, my special guest co-host is in the lobby, so we'll bring her on right now. And all the way from South Africa, my friend Brigetti, how are you? Very well in yourself. It's been a while. Yeah, I mean, we've we've probably seen each other online, but haven't really uh, been able to uh, spend some time in conversation. So thanks for joining me today. A great pleasure. Looking forward to it. As I said, it's been a while, and it's always nice to catch up again. Yes, and uh, for my guests who are watching, or whether you're watching uh, live, or you might be watching the replay, my friend Brigetti is from South Africa. Um, and, you know, I, I learned something today, Brigitte. I, I didn't know what time zone you were in. You know, I always check and Siri straightened me out. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's now 6 p.m. Um, in, in Cape Town. So we're a couple of hours ahead of you. Yeah, yeah, we're 12. Oh, okay, you're not 12 o'clock where you are? No, it's 6, it's 6 p.m. in the evening. Oh, Siri, you lied to me. She told me it was twelve. <laughs> so, I think Siri, I'm I'm one hour ahead of uh, of Stephen. Oh, okay. All right. Very good. Okay. So, around you, have you already had dinner then? Um, not yet. It's 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 on the stove. It's busy cooking. Okay. Smells delicious. <laughs> <laughs> What's for supper? <laughs> I've got some some uh, some lamb chops and vegetables going. Oh wow! Maybe I'll find a way to get over there. <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> you're welcome anytime. Well, careful what you wish for. You just never know when I might find your door. Um, we, you know, we, we talk about a lot of different things here. We talk, you know, broadcasting to your community. We we originally called it live streaming to your community, but. Stephen and I, of course, we, we, we try to talk about the social media uh, world, but we get off topic, and it's just more about community stuff. Um, while I've got you here, I guess, as a, as a co-host, uh, maybe you could talk a little bit about your mission and your passion with the, uh, the water crisis. Well, that's one of the things. You know, that's basically uh, what I've been doing for a year and a half now, um, focusing mainly on the water crisis. Um, it still is a crisis. We've we've had some good rains this year for the first time in three years. So our dams are um, just over fifty percent full. But it 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 doesn't mean we're out of the woods because we've got summer approaching, and on the first of October the agricultural season starts, which means okay. that the, the farmers are going to start drawing water from the dam, and they draw quite a sizable amount of water. So there's no reason for us to get too happy at the fact that we've had so much rain now because there are still some unknown factors that are at play um, for the coming months. But we definitely relieved that we've had, we finally, after three years, had some decent rain now. Um, yeah. But, you know, there's, there's lots of aspects one's got to look at. We've got to look at succession planning. We've got to build resilience. And it's not just Cape Town, South Africa. Um, there's other places all over South Africa and in the world that are facing similar challenges, even um, in the UK, right. um, even some parts of the US, some parts of Canada, in Australia, Perth. You right. know, this is a worldwide challenge, and we've got to really look and rethink at our relationship with water. So um, what, look at how I we guess, consume it. Right, right. Well, I guess... It's, it's weird uh, for me to, I shouldn't say weird, but it's it's a different conversation for me to have. Um, first of all, say hello to Teresa. Hello. Uh, thanks for joining, Teresa. And Lynn is out there saying hello to both of us today. Hope you have an amazing day as well. Um, I guess what we take advantage of water, I guess would be the first thing, right? Like I, you know, I get up, I go to my tap, I get water, or I go to the store and I buy it, or I... I cook with it all the time. Well, I don't, but Jennifer does. <laughs> I'm not allowed to cook. Um, but um, so I guess uh, that we need to 
maybe stop taking advantage of that fact would be the first thing as, as one of those uh, things you suggest on how we need to take care of this. You know, the thing is we don't think about water resilience until it's too late, literally. Mm. Because as you say, we open up the tap without giving it a second thought. You maybe brush your teeth and the water is just literally running away. Um, and then the largest contributor to water waste in the home, believe it or not, is flushing our toilets. Mm. Because essentially you're flushing your toilet with drinking water. You know, think about that for a moment. There's some people that yeah. have to walk miles and miles and miles to get access to possibly clean drinking water. Yeah. And what do we do in the suburbs? We flush that drinking water down our toilets. Yeah, even just to to get rid of, uh, I'm guilty, uh, you know, just maybe blew my nose and instead of throwing it in the garbage, I've thrown it in the toilet because it was closer or, um, yeah, and then it's gone. And, and you don't realize how much water that um, amounts to. It's a, it's a huge amount of water. To give you an idea, since we became more water smart in my home, um, apart from the fact that we are restricted to a certain amount of water but we were you know under normal circumstances my family was using 40,000 liters of water per month wow and now we're down to 6,000 liters of water per month from 40 simply by being water smart just your family you said just your home just my family and that is what the average family roughly was doing in the suburbs. Wow. So I can't, 40,000 liters. Wow. That, I didn't even think of that. That's. Well, David, if you think about it, when you use, when you I run guess. a tub of water to take a bath, and I mean, people don't think about this. They don't give it a thought, but if you run a tub of water to take a bath, you're using roughly between 80 to 120 liters per bath. Yeah. Okay. So you well, can I see how I, that very quickly adds up. Yeah, I never really thought of it that way. Like 40,000 liters. Well, I guess a toilet flush is, is probably a liter-ish. No, no. A toilet flush um, here is between 12 and 15 liters. Okay, That's wow. a lot of water. This is a, so okay. what we've done, um, and I mean, you can make simple changes. If you take two two-liter bottles of um um, of coke, for example, and you fill it with sand and you put that into your system, you're displacing four liters of water. So oh. each time you flush, you're saving four liters of water. So that's one thing you can do. Oh, you mean in the back of my toilet? In the back of your toilet, yes. Really? Take a two liter Coke bottle, full of sand, full of sand it full of... set it in the back, yeah. and then I only use, I don't use as much. Oh, wow, that, that's clever. It's going to displace the water, yes. Um, so that's one change you can make. The other change is we don't even flush with, 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 with drinking water any longer. So what we do is we have a basin. We, we're not allowed to bath. If we take a bath, um, we'd be using your allocation for the whole week. And I'd much rather, I'd much rather have a shower. Uh, so instead of using the shower as a therapeutic thing, which we've always done, and all that water literally is running down, um, the drain wasted. You take a short shower, you stand in a basin, and you catch all that water and you flush your toilet with it. So instead oh, of that wow. water running away, you can now flush your toilet with grey water. Same with a with a laundry machine. Um, if you have a front loader, you're using on average between depending on on when your machine was made and the technology yeah. that it uses, you could use anything between 50 and 80 liters of water per wash, per cycle. If you're wow. using a, um, if you're using a big front, a uh, top loader washing machine, you are roughly per load using 100 to 120 liters of water. Again, wow. that's all the water that's just literally um, going down the drain. So what you do now is instead of having the outlet pipe um, going down the drain system, that outlet pipe is now going into a bucket and all that water is used also for flushing the toilets. 
And it's little changes like that that has made a huge difference to the amount of water we consume. Also, in every single under every single faucet in the house, we've got a basin. So when you wash your hands, that water, you can catch that water. You'd be surprised how many times you wash your hands and the amount of water you'd be using. Oh, yeah, um, well. That water, you'd also capture that and use it for flushing the toilets, for watering your plants. Um, you don't need to water your plants with clean drinking water. The only well, water I, you can't That use, I know because Jennifer, um, she has three fish aquariums. And right. when she when she changes the water, um, however often she does that, she drains some water out and then she adds some fresh water in. She waters her, her garden using that. And and honestly, she says fish poop is really good fertilizer. So. <laughs> Abs absolutely. I mean, plants don't, the only water that you will not be, that you will, won't use for your plants um, is your water from washing your dishes. Yeah, okay. Well, my friend, uh, uh, that's really interesting. I, I, I mean, I knew about your your conversation, but I, I've never really gotten all these details. So, uh, I'm really glad you're on here today. And my friend Jody Morningstar, he said, I never really considered the fact that we use potable or drinkable for bathroom, laundry, dishes, and gardening. It's really uh, some very valid consumer knowledge. And and one of the things, uh, aside from other good reasons to be uh, water friendly i guess i'm thinking about my water bill and how much i'm paying the water company when i really don't need to <laughs> it's kind of how much you am can, i getting back you can make huge huge savings and literally um decrease your 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 water footprint um radically simply by making little changes at home and they're not they're not huge changes that can be done. And then also um, harvesting rainwater off your roof. Yeah. Um, you know, get the runoff. Yeah. I know you we have, uh, yeah, we have rain, rain barrels. Yes. Yeah, we have a rain barrel here. And I know, uh, uh, I think Jennifer uses that sometimes for, for watering. But we've had a lot of rain here for uh, this summer that we've had, if it's summer, July. Now, I complain. I'm not really complaining, but... Uh, the grass is certainly greener. That's nice. Uh, it's going to be really, really hot later today. Our, our rain seems to make it more humid. It hasn't really. Yesterday was cool, but um, I guess it's like you say. It's really not. It wouldn't be tough to do this. They're just habits, right? Instead of just going over and running the water, and going, "Well, oh, thank you very much." Sit back down. You have a, a basin, or you collect the. Like you say that that. Uh, that idea of putting the, the Coke bottle in the back of your, your, I'm going to do that one. I'm going to, you know what, I'm going to do it. And I'm not even going to tell Jennifer and see if anybody notices the difference. <laughs> but that's the thing. No one, no one really notices the difference, you know? So yeah. that's the amount of water that you're literally drinking water that you're wasting. Um, yeah. Well, the shower thing too, where, yeah, like how much of that water isn't even touching my body? And, and it's just going down the drain that, that could be used for something else. Um, Lynn's, Lynn's watching out there again, too. She's agreeing. I would have never guessed of doing this. Well, and, and you know, Lynn, uh, like, like I say, the, the, the savings on, on money, uh, it would be interesting to uh, – geez, maybe i got a project on my hands. It would be interesting to do this and compare after even six months or three months three six well, maybe we'll do three all maybe we'll do three quarters right and check the bill and see how much we would save in a year by doing some of the, the things uh you suggested so this is this is something that you talk a lot about in in your community uh and i'm guessing yes. that it's, it's a regular conversation where you live correct and and you know the other tip i can give you as well is if you're taking a shower you know when you run your shower initially the water is cold because you're waiting for, for it to heat up depending on how far your geezer is yeah. from your from your shower yeah. so all that water is literally clean water that you you're allowing it to run away so you can capture that clean water um and use it for for washing your floors for doing all kinds of things cleaning the bathroom cleaning the kitchen um you know, yeah. that's that's a huge amount of water that you're wasting every day just waiting for the water to get hot. Yeah, and that's – wow, i scratching my head about a few things here because <laughs> that's a bit of a wake-up call. Well, and like I say, where I live, like it's uh, – and, you know, and, and Jody 
and Lynn and, and Teresa are all in my area. And uh, I guess you just take it for granted. And, uh, you know, I try to wake up every day and not take things for granted, but I guess it's one of those take for granted things that we don't mean to take for granted. But now I think about it and you go, hmm. I mean, you know, we can we can always talk about we're always better off than somebody else somewhere in the world, right? Uh, I, and you talk about walking to get water. I mean, when, when we were in Mexico back in October, uh, you know, we went to the, the Tulum ruins and they talked about how they used to walk, you know, like 12 kilometers one way to get water. Um, I have a friend over in Zambia right now and uh, helping uh, uh, with uh, creating an economy there. Um, but he talks about how far they still have to walk to get clean water. And hopefully when they get there, it's available. And sometimes if it is, it's not always clean. It's not drinkable. That's that's the problem. I mean, in, in, in Cape Town made headlines all over the world. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's not see the it all only the place that's, that's, that's water challenged. We've got towns um, in South Africa that has had what got coined as day zero um, for many, many months. Where I mean, there's some instances where the only water available to people is a stream that is shared with the animals, um, you know, and they have to use that for for all their water needs. It's insane. Um, but these things don't make the news. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's, 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 yeah. yeah. I guess. Uh, well, like I say we we see it uh, over here. Yeah, like CNN once in a while or. And I don't really watch CNN because you know what CNN stands for? Constantly negative news. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I'm going to steal that. <laughs> you can. Uh, and, and you're not stealing from me. I borrowed it from I don't remember who, but I just remember hearing that uh, at a convention somewhere years ago, and it's always stuck with me. But it's true, right? Um, I kind of made a boo-boo here today. I told people to type guest in the comments if they want to join. I forgot to set that up. So if you want to join us here on camera and talk about, uh, with Brigetti or myself, or, and you're, you just want to talk about anything, I've just shared the, uh, the link uh, below here in the broadcast. And uh, you can click on that. And if you've got a webcam or your smartphone, you can come on camera and join us. Uh, Lynn, I'd welcome you to do that. Teresa, Jody, anybody watching? Be great. Go ahead. Yeah. I, I was involved in something quite interesting on Saturday as well. Um, you know, something we take for granted uh, as well is is having a website. You know, every Dick, Tom, and Harry has got a website. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> but there was an event that – it's an annual event, actually, that's hosted by WordPress. And okay. what they do is they um, – they run a competition of sorts and then they select six or seven charities and they'll set up a day where you have teams uh, of people that will set up a website for the charity. Okay. Uh, a fully functional website from scratch. Um, nice. And I mean, there were some charities there that had, that has been running for two decades and they never had a website ever. Is that right? Um, you know, so that that's amazing for them to be able yeah. to now capture what they do and share that with the rest of the world, um, share it with, you know, their sponsors or get more sponsorship because they now have more visibility. Yeah. Or there were other well, charities that had simple websites that had not been changed since they started many years ago and it wasn't functional, you know, so just to get that updated. It's, it's amazing what we take for granted. And, and the well, I was, was, was going to say again, there's something else we take for granted, right, to uh, my internet, um, to your internet, to our internet, and uh, how we expect things to work. I just I did a function uh, on Sunday, and part of the recording didn't work out from the server that I pay money to use from this company. And I was like, ah, I really rely on this. And they're like, well, you know, and it's like, well, I – I'm, I'm angry, but I can't really get mad at them because I don't think they're intentionally doing this to me. But uh, then I, I take the lesson and go, well, I guess I should record somewhere else besides to my server. And yeah, it's all those technology, right? I remember, I remember back in this early cell phone days, I sold cell phones when they were bag phones or mounted in your car. 
Uh, and I had uh, people from the hospital we had a contract with, and they would say, well, I, is this going to work everywhere? It's like, well, like it's wireless. Like, you know, the cellular gods could come down and, <laughs> you know, interrupt your Steal signal your or signal. whatever. <laughs> yeah, right, you know? And they're like, well, this has to be real. I'm like, well, of course, that was brand new technology back then, right? But even still, now we, we can't rely on our, although it's a lot better. But yeah, those things we take for granted. And I guess that's really part of the lesson here is uh, it's it's not just about the water. It's not just about the website. It's uh, the taking for granted situation, which we've all had that conversation. Our parents probably told us, don't take this for granted. And, uh, eat and your you vegetables. Know. This kid yeah. in Ethiopia doesn't have vegetables. Yeah, that's right. Well, and, you know, yeah. I wake up every day and I look around and I, you know, I've, geez, I've got I don't know, 10 computers I'm looking at and I've got all these things and toys and electronics and cars and and we just, they become a part of our regular day. Um, yeah, and then, like, I know the last time our internet went down for, like, an hour, a whole hour, whole entire hour. <laughs> and I was like, ah, and my son was like, ah, and I'm like, let's go let's go and then i said let's go for a drive <laughs> and we went to a wherever we went for coffee and lunch and the first thing you wanted to do is oh do they have the wi-fi here i said yo put that away we can live an hour without it but if i was in the middle of working or I, i've done it a show and my power's gone out uh social media world day i i was i was coming live from my phone because we had a thunderstorm here and couldn't rely on that internet to be here but, uh, I mean, there's there's still some people that have dial-up internet, believe it or not. Yeah. Uh, we have we have places in South Africa <laughs> where they still have to rely on on dial-up. You know, it's um, it's not a given that internet access is is yet freely available everywhere because it isn't. Yeah, I don't know about uh, where you are. And again, for those who are just joining us, uh, my friend Brigetti is joining me today as a special guest co-host. Uh, and she's all the way from South Africa joining us. Um, so I don't know in South Africa what it's like, but here our government has actually deemed internet as a necess. Uh, I'm going to say this wrong. A necess a necessary utility. They, they Can I tell you something that. interesting? There's actually yeah. an, an organization called um, Project Isiswe. Okay. And it came it came about because the founders believed that internet access should be as I mean this sounds such a cliche right now. <laughs> but they believed uh, that internet access should be as freely available as water. Oh. You know. <laughs> that's pushing. To 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 everyone. Um and 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 the the ambition is to be able to have every corner of South Africa covered with internet, and yeah. and I don't know about you know what it's like for you there, but internet access here is still relatively expensive. You know, data is expensive, right? And so again, you have this digital divide between the haves and the haves nots. Mm -hmm. You know, so. Um, there's been a couple of studies done, and they it's it's actually been quite um, shocking to see the amount of money people in the less affluent or poorer communities would spend on data, showing right. the value they place on being connected. Um, yeah, we, we uh, it's not bad. Well, I don't know. I have super duper kick like Ferrari internet, right? <laughs> um, so I think I pay about $90 a month unlimited, but I'm, I'm getting like 60, 70 down and like 10 to 12 upload. Right. So I that's would say that's, Canadian dollars, right? Yes. Yes. And then for, uh, I will say on our cellular devices, I think we pay a lot more than than most other countries, and I don't think we have any plans. I might have, maybe there are. I haven't seen any unlimited data plans for cell phone in Canada yet, at least not in Ontario. I know there's that's a couple a that have price. tried. No, that's that's a fairly good price, David. I mean, if yeah. I compare that to what um, we get, yeah. I mean, I'm 
currently paying more than what you are for um, 10 meg download mm. and 3 meg upload. Oh, and you're paying more than me? Yes. <whistles> yes. Wow, maybe but, I'm not... Um, <laughs> And not having it so bad. <laughs> Maybe I'm not, not visiting you anytime soon. <laughs> but but we, we finally, uh, I'm hoping to get um, fiber soon. They've, they've started installing fiber in, in the area here. And that's slightly cheaper for a faster speed. Yeah, we've got a lot of that happening here as well. Uh, where, where I did a broadcast on Sunday, um, I did a, a pay-per-view stream for a boxing club. And uh, the building we were in had like 30 lines of fire. The, the guy's actually reselling them. He's, he's gotten into that business. So he had like all these lines and I'm like, okay, I need at least like, I need a strong line. And he's like, yeah, you can have your own separate. And I was like, no, I don't just mean separate on the same line as everybody else. I need it on my own. And he goes, just tell me what you need. So then he sets it up and then he goes, do a, do a test. And I had a, a download speed of like 170 and I had an upload <gasps> speed of wow. like 79. He's, wow. like, well, he's like, well, that do. I'm like, yeah, I'll be all right. <laughs> <laughs> I was broadcasting. Right. That, HD, that, that, right? is, that is Ferrari speed. Yeah. That's like, uh, that's lightning speed. That's faster than Ferrari. But anyway, but I mean, and I said to my son, when we left, I said, no, now don't you just wish we could just pick this internet up and just take it along with us. And uh, I, it's, we, we might be able to do that someday. Just pick it up and take it with us wherever we go. Right. But, uh, what, what other things happen? That, I mean, besides from the water crisis and thank you so much for sharing that. Cause it, again, it's, uh, you know, I've, I've been aware of it because of you and because of what I've heard on the news, but I wasn't really, uh, that, didn't get that much detail. So I've got some things to think about there. But aside from the water crisis, what else, uh, what, what else is happening in your community? What kind of things are you involved with? Um, well, the other challenge that's facing South Africa is also an energy crisis. Okay. That's 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 another thing. Um, unfortunately, there's been so much corruption within that department, mm. um, and a lot of it's you know being highlighted now. So um, so we're hoping that that can get straightened out. Okay. And you know things are also building up towards an election here next year. So oh, yeah. there's a lot of things happening. You know, electioneering time is 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 a busy time for any country. Yeah, we've just gone through that a bit uh, here. We had we've had a change of our Ontario Premier, a change of of, of government, and uh, like a different color of government. I guess <laughs> we typically have red, blue, and orange here. PC and Liberal, and uh, NDP. Uh, we're now PC on, on, on Premier Doug Ford, and that was a change from Liberal. And we've had a lot of issues with our hydro. They're, they're like so high in price they seem to be coming down now with this new government but who knows how long that'll last and uh some of the uh the board of well not some of all of the board of directors of hydro one were all strongly suggested to resign and they did so now we're seeing that change as well so i mean uh the corruption the word corruption nobody's really said that around here but everybody kind of wonders whose pockets are are getting lined with all of this. Is that is that similar to? Uh, I, I, I'm not aware of your, the issue there. Um, yes, definitely within the energy sector, but also within the water sector. You know, we had a change um, in the in the ministry not too okay. long ago, and it was discovered that when the new the, the incoming minister announced that the department was bankrupt, oh. um, that you know there was a huge amount of fleecing of funds going on and and you know to build water resilience takes a huge amount of money it takes a lot of capital um to get to build desalination plants to to do groundwater extraction um to reclaim gr uh, gray water anything you do takes planning um, and usually that planning isn't a couple of months because you've got to do impact assessments yeah. um, and all kinds of things. You know, that those things take time and they take a lot of money. 
And when you're sitting with a government department that is supposed to, or is tasked with building water resilience or energy resilience, and you discover that vast amounts of money has been looted and there's no money, it's a challenge because now that water has to come from us, the citizens. And obviously yeah. um, there's going to be lots of unhappiness on the ground when you realize that some fat cats have, you know, looted the money mm -hmm. and, um, and, and people who are really hard pressed because fuel prices are so high here, the cost of living is high, um, and then your energy and water keeps skyrocketing. Uh, I mean, we've, yeah. we've, David, we've had an increase of roughly 500% in the cost of water here. That's insane. That's, how does that, how does insane. that, how does that even, how does it get to that point without, and you sort of answered one of my questions. I was going to say that the, the morale of people in your area must be, um, I guess, a, ne a negative one or at least feeling betrayed and, and that sort of, is that an accurate uh, description? Oh, yes, that's, that's pretty accurate. Um, you know, if you, if you talk to people, there's a lot of anger on the ground about uh, what happened, you know, how did we get here? We trusted the uh, local government to provide a service to us. Um, you know, yeah. how did we get to the point where we needing to do what we do now? But, um, you know, having said that, I must tell you, Cape Town um, has been held the first city in the world to achieve the kind of water savings we have anyway. Right. No other no other city has been able in the world has been able to um, to get to so much water savings in such in such a short period of time. Right. We literally went from um, 120 million liters um, of water per month down to roughly 450 on average wow so, well i guess i guess when your hand is forced right or you realize oh crap i better do something because my government's not um and and i guess sometimes maybe we we don't think about it until we're in that position like you are like i say for me uh, it's been a bit of a wake-up call having this conversation um we've had Quite a few people out here uh, watching us in and out of the broadcast. You know how that works. But I'll say hello to my friend Matthew Corey as well as out there has been watching. Um, and, yeah, lots of friends who are finding this very interesting. Uh, for those of you who are watching, thank you so much for joining right now. And if you are watching the replay, thank you for that as well. Uh, my friend Brigetti is joining me from South Africa as my co-host today here on Broadcasting to Your Community. And if you'd like to join us here on camera, come on over and click on the link that's on the Video Show Network page, and you can join us via your uh, smart device or on your uh, your PC at home. Um, if you're just joining now, we've been talking about the water crisis in Cape Town and and some of the things. We'll have to do you do you list these things on on, a, on your Facebook or, or do you have a website for 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 what we're talking about here? Do you, for your own self. You know, I have got a Facebook page called Cape Town Water Crisis. Okay. And right. that kind of is the is where all the resources sit with regards to the water. And there's a huge community there of people. Um, one thing that is that I think has been amazing for me is the is the community that's come out of this, the community spirit. Right. Um, you know, people really have rallied together and and um, to help each other. People share freely their, their, their tips and tricks about how to save water, how to um, do things differently. People have, you know, they've, they've got their own JoJo tank story, water storage tanks, mm -hmm. and they ask for advice on how to get that water to pot potable standard. Um, you know, they possibly have had mosquitoes um, or what, you know, all kinds of bugs and stuff. And, um, and, and people who, who know how to deal with this are, have been very, very willing to help. Yeah. Um, that has been absolutely amazing. So, you, so you've, you've probably got new relationships out of it as well then for, I guess you'd call it networking. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, absolutely. Very, very 
um, it was, it's been great for community building, um, for relationship building. And the thing that, that I think has struck me the most is how much we've learned about the value of water in a short wow. space of time. We've learned about um, how water reticulation works. We've learned about whose responsibility is what in terms of the supply chain um, of water. You know, yeah. just learning that water doesn't simply come out of a tap. There's a whole, you know, because because there's a process. There's a process, you know, and I mean, yeah. we may not have considered that process. And if you do you have, uh, you mentioned other parts of the world, uh, even Canada, which I wasn't aware of. Uh, have you had conversations with other parts of the world and 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 communicating and what are oh, they yes. doing and sharing ideas as well? Yeah, I have been amazed. Um, the amount of, of radio and TV stations that have approached me um, that have come across my live streams uh, oh, yeah. from Canada as well, from Australia, from Mexico, mm. um, from different parts of the US, from the UK, from Spain, um, yeah. you know, people that I did, was not connected to before. Yeah. Um, Let's Let's talk about that. I mean, you and I are obviously, you know, we're both very familiar with live streaming and and we're, we're very much in love with this platform, uh, BeLive.TV, which congratulations, by the way, you're one of the newest moderators in the BeLivers group. Thank you. Yes, it's been awesome. You know, to me, it's sort of, uh, you know, I, I mean, I've, I've always been fairly active in the BeLivers yeah. community. Um, so it feels great to be able to to help others in a more official capacity, if you wish. Yeah. Well, we've both had uh, the the opportunity, as you mentioned, to uh, meet several other people all around the planet, uh, as I like to say, this one big city we now live in, uh, and yeah. network. It's really, uh, at least I know for me, and I'm sure you would agree, a whole new way of networking. Uh, I said on, on last week's show or some show, when I go to the coffee shop or the bar to have a beer or whatever and I hang out with people, I'm talking about my friends here in town, but I talk about you and Steven. I've, I've mentioned everybody I know, and they're like, wow, you really have friends all over the planet. How do you meet them all? And I'm like, well, you know, I haven't met them in person, but it's almost the same thing. We have a relationship going. And it's, uh, for, for lack of uh, stealing a, a line, it's a whole new world, right? <laughs> and, uh, it is. I really believe people are actually doing themselves. Um, if you're in business, you're doing yourself a huge disservice yeah. by not live streaming because you're basically um, opening up the doors to your business to the whole world. You're looking beyond your immediate circle of influence yeah. and you're literally opening the doors to the world is what you're doing effectively and, and even, even if that world like i've had this conversation with uh some real estate agents here in town and I, i've sort of said well you're opening a whole world and they're like well yeah but i only work here in sarnia lampton and i'm like well okay but and i like how you just put that but beyond your immediate circle there's a whole bunch of other people out there that you don't know if they're looking for a real estate agent. You don't know the timing. Um, you know, maybe their current real estate agent is busy or they didn't like the last one they dealt with. Who knows what their reason is? Live streaming puts you in front of people you've never, I guarantee you've never been in front of before. And you will, you will, and I, I would be hard pressed. I couldn't put a number on it, but your business could not not increase if you were live streaming, even if you just went live from your phone. Would you agree with that? But I mean, you know, the, even the people that I have met, you know, I think of someone like Mitch Jackson, you know, a world renowned attorney. Yeah. That I now call a friend. <laughs> yeah. You know, just as one example, these are people I would never have met any yeah. other way you know yeah. and and he's a click of a button away i can message him yeah. um people like maury smith okay. you know um 
I would never have met her before. It's, it's, it's amazing the doors it's open. Now, here's a funny story for you. I met a friend who lives in Hawaii um, through live streaming, and we became great friends. And then she invited me um, onto a forum where she was going to be a um, a keynote speaker. Okay. But the person hosting this, get this, lives in South Africa. <laughs> in a neighborhood that I lived for over 20 years. Oh, wow. And we never bumped into each other. I didn't know that she existed and vice versa. Yeah. Well, so how, how big introduced... is Cape Town? Uh, Cape Town. The uh, population wise. Population for about 4 million, just over 4 million people. Oh, okay. All right. So she introduced me to this lady who lived in, and we lived in the same neighborhood for over 20 years. We never bumped into each other. We would have gone to the same shopping mall for years. Right. <laughs> and I got introduced to her by someone in Hawaii. I mean, that's insane. Yeah. yeah so yeah. you never know who you are going to meet. You you just I, uh, never I, know. I, I couldn't agree with you more on that one. And uh, I, I guess, uh, and I'm, I'm sure you, you, you know, uh, probably felt the same way, you know. Kind of feel like I know a lot of people, and I do in my community. It's more like more know me. But uh, when Jennifer and I went on our honeymoon last October in seventeen, we went to Mexico. We went to a resort. Now you go to a resort, you probably could run into somebody you know because people from all over travel, and a lot of people go to the same place because they, oh, where did you stay? Oh, we went to the Bay of Principe, and da, da, da. oh yeah, you should check out, you know. So we went and. Uh, well, Jennifer made it clear that if I saw somebody that I knew, I was <laughs> not allowed to approach them. <laughs> so, so there was there was probably two people that I saw, and I caught up with them later, <laughs> and didn't tell her till after we got home. But anyway, um, that's just my life. But there was a couple of people. There was there was a couple of people uh, that overheard us talking. At you know we were swimming at the 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 swimming pool bar and having fun and splashing and all that stuff. And overheard us talking about where we're from. And one girl, another fellow come over, Oh, are you from Sarnia? Thought, I'm a truck driver from Hamilton and I drive through Sarnia five days a week. And I've been doing that for 17 years. It's about my age. Right. And another girl was dating a guy who lived in Sarnia that I didn't know. So that conversation started, right? So yeah, that's that's. I mean, that's another example of, you, you and you, you just never know who's around or who's listening or who's watching. Like here today, uh, even my friend Jody who popped up earlier, I was really surprised that he was watching, because we don't know who we know how many people watch, but we never know who's watching, and uh, it could be that that one that leads us to, uh, who knows what. Like I, honestly, I just went to Mitch Jackson's. Facebook page here and I sent him a friend request and I'm guessing that likely I'll hear back from him because we have 16 mutual friends that are mutual to you and I and he probably reckon you know at open a conversation um, I think most people are open to that when they see mutual friends in there although I've had one or two say like why are you sending me this and that's a fair question why do you want to connect with me well, the uh, other guy, if you're connecting with, with Mitch, Mitch Jackson, you may want to connect with Joey Vitale. Joey Vitale. Um, yeah. Okay. If I can spell that right. I don't know. I'll just go to your page. Yes, you, you can find it there. You, you he's sure he's a great there? guy to connect with as well. So who is who is Joey? Joe is also an attorney, and I love he actually started a show um, on IGTV recently, uh, and the show is called Joey Says No. <laughs> Joey, say the name again. Joey Vitale. Oh, Vitale. V I T. Yeah. Why don't I see him on here? Um, I see Joey Garetti. No, it's Joey uh, Vitale. It's spelled V-I-T-A-L-E. 
But I don't even see a Joey. Um, maybe he said. Maybe he said it so we can't see him. Could anyway, be. yeah. Could be. But that's another yeah. example of connecting one of the. I mean, it's it's a whole new way mm -hmm. to to network. And I, I I kind of go. Let's go back a bit to where you said anybody who's not using live streaming for their business is doing themselves a disservice to grow in their business. Um, and I think that you and I probably know the answer to that is. And our friend Molly would agree that camera confidence, that getting in front of the camera and going live. Oh, I mean, I interview people recorded and they're like, oh, I didn't do my hair. Or what am I supposed to say? Or I'm going to forget, you know, after I do this, oh, I forgot to say that. They just really overthink it and talk themselves out of it, don't you think? Oh, yes, absolutely. But, you know, I, I will not easily forget what it felt like for me um and you know i was i've always been a fairly outgoing person but i remember what it felt like um stepping in front of the camera for the first couple of times um yeah. you think of someone like molly for example you know she came from an environment where she was used to being in front of an audience uh i mean molly's one of the most vivacious people that i know yeah. <laughs> she loves the camera. She absolutely just loves it. Um, yeah, well, and and you know, like, uh, there's a point there. Sorry to interrupt, but there's a point in there. She loves the camera, and she's excited about it. And I've, I've been told to say, well, it's easy for you, Dave. Like you were a karaoke host and a DJ for all those. You're you're used to a microphone, and you're and I love getting in front of the camera too. So that's easy for you, but I don't have your personality. So how do we overcome that part of it? You know, it's 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 mind over matter. And the way I try and explain it to people is um, it's it's like a Skype call that you're doing with someone, except other people are listening to your call. Yeah, right. Um, and they can and they can join the conversation if they so desire. Yeah. So I, I say to people, just you know. Let's, and, and I usually will do a test run with them beforehand and say, well, see, it's it's exactly like a Skype call. You are there and I'm there and it's just a matter of other people. And, and I say to them, talk to me, you know. Yeah. Talk to – have a conversation with me I the way we're say, doing now. I always tell and people, that's it. Just, just have, a have a conversation. And I find, too, um, you know, I, I always kind of do like you – I kind of do the pre-coaching conversation whether I'm live or if I'm uh, doing a recorded with somebody. I did it the other day, you know. Uh, I was recording some testimonials for a local group, and and the lady was too, very vibrant and uh, very happy, just a positive person to be around. And then she's like, oh, this is video? I thought it was just talking. And I'm like, you'll be fine. Just smile, look at me, and just have a conversation. And... Uh, you know, but in doing that, especially in a long interview like this type of thing, where there's a, a lot more than just two minutes, I find once you get people relaxed, once they start talking about their passion, whether it's music, art, water crisis, whatever that is, once they get started on their passion, they get going. And the next thing you know, you're like, okay, it's time to go now. And they're like, oh. <laughs> That's over already, you know, so uh, I, I think it's uh, important to have that pre-conversation. Aaron Strayer is out there. Hello, Aaron. Excited to be working with you both shortly. Looking forward to that as well. Aaron, if you want to join us on camera, if you've got a couple moments, we've got about 10 minutes. Uh, to, see, look at that. We're 10 minutes away from... I like, crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I was watching your poll on uh, <laughs> the Be Livers group about... Um, I don't have it in front of me, but the question of why do you, or how do you plan, right? Your shows, is that what it was? Let me see if I can find it here. Oh. It was, ba the, the poll is basically, basically yeah. to to um, find out what it is that, that draw people to the Believe Be Livers group and what it is where people, uh, in which areas people may need some assistance. Yeah. Um, because you, know, you, want, you want to give assistance, but you want to give the right kind of assistance. Well, that's right, and and I, I guess that's why it's nice to have more than one uh, moderator in there because we've all got different personalities, 
so we can all kind of adapt. I know I've done that in the the Be Live and Five uh, Metrics group a while back. Was like, you know what? Um, I think I'm going to put you in touch with Steven because I think maybe he could, you know. And we all kind of work off of each other in in that group. But I know that happens uh, a lot. But it's, here. it's the same, like you know. I mean, Molly's fantastic uh, yep. with camera con. He's wonderful. Yeah. Um, but then you may, get a, you may get a very very quiet person and say, well. I can't do what Molly does, you know. Yeah. Um, and you don't. I'm, you don't have to do what Molly does. No, you don't. But that's what you want people to realize. Um, yeah. So you will attract people that feel attracted to you. We don't all have to be the same. In fact, I want to tell you a little story quickly. Sure. I started doing video business cards for people. Okay. So the other day, I had this guy. Um, and I did a, a short video for him. And he wasn't, he's not a very animated person in person. You know, he's hes just, he's more of a calm kind of uh, character. And, and, and someone who saw the video said, you know, but no, this video is wrong. He needs to be more animated. He needs to sound more um, excited. And, and I, I thought about it and I said, but, you know, when you're on video and somebody meets you in person, they mustn't get a shock and say, oh, who are you again? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because you, yeah. you need to be yourself when you're on camera. So if this guy is not an, a very animated person in real life, he does, you know, it would be wrong for him to portray that in a video. And when somebody met him in person for business, like, Really, you're not that guy. <laughs> yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I I place a lot of emphasis on being yourself. You know, playing to that whole thing about authenticity. Just be who you are. Be who you are naturally, so that when somebody meets you in real life, um, they will recognize you and and not sort of wonder do you have a split personality or something. Yeah, no, I, I agree. That's uh, there's a there's a song in there somewhere. There's a Disney song or a Sesame. Just be yourself. And be yes. <laughs> <laughs> Just be yourself. <laughs> Just be who you are. And if they don't like you, I, you don't have to hang around them. It's okay. Um, Hi, Aaron. Aaron Hi. has joined us. Thank you so much for joining us, Aaron. Uh, it's Thanks. nice to uh, be chatting with you here uh, on our show. Uh, course you know Brigetti she's joining me here she's replacing I'm I'm having considerations about whether I should have Steven back or not <laughs> <laughs> what I, Oops. I, got these, I got these ladies joining me here I mean I've never had this problem before right you never so. had two ladies joining you when Steven's with you <laughs> no, not like that no he's gonna watch he's gonna he'll, he'll be back next Monday I'm sure he'll uh well he won't yell at me but we we like He'll to have a good laugh. We a good We like to we like to. Stephen and I work well together. That's why we keep doing it. Aaron, what's uh? Thanks for joining us here. Tell everybody uh, where you are. Yeah, I'm in Michigan. I'm in the U.S. Yeah, whereabouts? Because you're not far from me. Then I'm south and west of you, I believe. Where? What Providence are you? Providence. I know that's what we call them. Providence. Providence. Yeah, yeah. Providence. Providence. <laughs> We're Providence or state. Whatever. Yeah. We yeah. have a prime minister. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the Great Lakes surround me. Yes, that's right. Uh, I'm Sarnia, right on the thumb of Michigan. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yep. Right on right Port Huron. Yep. You're just through the tunnel. We used to go party with you guys when we were yeah, kids. Yeah, yeah. I'm right by the bridge. Uh, I'm like three minutes from the Blue Water Bridges. Gotcha. Yeah, gotcha. So so the, we're the only maybe about in, four hours apart from each okay, other. Okay, there you go. The tunnel's yeah. up in Windsor Way. Yep. Which is about. Oh wow, hour. that's that's really close. Just four hours away. I know. Yeah. I know. So, is that by is that by car or or a flight? Car. That's walking. Oh wow. That's walking. Oh wow. <laughs> <laughs> we're that close, David. <laughs> we are. So when we we finally have a bee livers community, uh, uh, I've heard rumors of that. Mm -hmm. You know, be livers, uh, meet and greets, like or whatever. Meet up. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, we'll have to uh, we'll have to fight the Canadian and American border to see. 
We'll be the Which facilitators, way? David. Yeah, that's we'll right. Hey. Of the I know. <laughs> I'd, I'd be happy to go up and give a speech. <laughs> I'll give you actually, the mic. <laughs> there you go. I'm actually, I'm doing one tomorrow for uh, my city here. I've been asked to give a talk on uh, volunteers and the impact they have in our community. So I, awesome. when I'm finished here today, I've got to finish my... Uh, yeah, I'm gonna have fun with it. That's for sure. I'm really excited. So it's about a hundred. Can you people. imagine if we ever had a, like a worldwide be live as get together? No, we'd we all just, be fighting you know... for the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> Take a ticket. <laughs> Number one twenty three. Yeah, yeah. There's gonna have to be a process in there right? somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> we'll seat numbers, something I don't know. <laughs> so, Aaron, what? Uh, tell everybody we've got a few minutes left here. Uh, brag about yourself here. What do you do? Brag about myself. Well, re recovering corporate women hire me to get beyond the now what stage of business. Really, yep. that's that's kind of who I who I service because most of them are scared, they're confused, they're playing small. So I help them revitalize, rejuvenate, and reignite their passion. So that's kind of what I do. I and and how long how long have you been been taking that on? Uh, this is going on. I think I'm solid three and a half years into it. I retired yeah. from my medical career. Um, I did um, level one trauma cardiac surgery for 24 years, and I okay. walked I walked away from that four years ago and stepped into medical consulting. Um, so I I went all over the United States teaching um, super users and massive teams how to use uh <laughs> how to use electronic medical recording and taught physicians oh, wow. how to use that um and then really just kind of took what i knew from uh in my former life i also ran a multi-million dollar business with a with a my partner then and um you know took what i learned from that and kind of morphed it all together and i'm like people people can pay me now <laughs> you know what <laughs> Good for you. Like, congratulations on that. I mean, I can tell you, uh, well, my, my wife, for example, Jennifer, she started a, and, and she's, she works in the, the dental field, but mm -hmm. she started an eyelash business. Yeah. And uh, she's just looking to do it part time. Right. But um, it's, it's a whole, and there it is again, a whole new world. <laughs> One of these days I'm going to sing the whole song, but um, it's a, it is, it's a whole new world. Yeah. Right. Sure. And, you know, she's going through this figuring it out stage of, okay, like even, okay, do I want to be sitting here? Do I need to be looking here? And where do I place things around the room yeah. to, then I was like, yeah. And then you need uh, counting and all that stuff. And she's like, oh, do I have to do that? And I'm like, well, Wait, <laughs> well yeah. no, you don't have to. You can pay somebody if you want. She's Dutch. <laughs> <laughs> and she'll be the first to tell you that. Uh, so it's okay. So she's not cheap. She's frugal. Frugal. Mm -hmm. it's, that's a good her, word. I, that's I a very her, good word. Yeah. I mm -hmm. call her a Tweety bird because birds go cheap, cheap, cheap. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, she's, <laughs> she's at the, probably at the front, front, front lines, right? Like just stepping off yeah. and, and just trying to recoup some of her investment and making sure that she's, you know That's what I mean? It, right? Like, and, and you have to weigh out, okay, what's coming in versus what's going out. And that has to be, yeah. you know, yes, there there's, you have to put skin in the game, right? Sure. Like you have to be invested and there's a, there's a payoff for your investment, but at what point in time is it going to level out and, yeah. you know, really. And, make and you're exactly right. That's exactly where she mm -hmm. is. Cause there was substantial investment. She had to go to school and she sure. had to go away and, you know, even down to just paying, putting the gas in the car to get there right. and back and all right. that stuff. Yep. And it was, it's it's she's she's very scared as excited you know mm -hmm. um and oh my goodness and then of course and then she even and i just tell her she's being silly but she's like feels like she's putting it on me to and i'm like really um i i wouldn't be sitting right here right now if my beautiful wife hadn't supported me and still does yeah uh you know to to be doing what i do and my and this is probably the male in me coming out it's honey it's only money <laughs> right. well, well, well money is an energy right like just like totally. it's it's just an energy exchange and as long as we put the emphasis on that it's an energy exchange like i put my time in and you pay me time is energy right. money is energy yeah. and it needs to be exchanged equally and yeah. um you know people get all hung up on oh they're never gonna pay me for that i don't know if i'm worth that you know, is it worth my time? 
Am, do I have the experience? Do I have the training? Do I have, you know, and they get all that, that blah, blah, blah gets going in their head and talking them down and, yeah. you know, talk yourself out of it. Talk uh, yourself guilt, out of it. Yeah. Guilty as well. I've been there. Uh, even with my show and everything I do now, I, now I just go, you know what, this is what I, this is my time. Never mind all the equipment. Let's just go my time. And if my son works with me, he'll do it for free if I ask him, but sure. he shouldn't. He shouldn't. He should get paid. So I put that all in and I go, this is what it costs me. Sometimes I might go, this is my cost. So I'm not even making money here. So if I, if I want to be generous to you as a charity or nonprofit, this is my cost. At least cover that. Right. And then if it's business, I go, this is my time, you know, all that stuff. So, but I think you're right. I think people are afraid to say I am worth this much money because I think often this much money is probably significantly more than what they're used to. Mm -hmm. And because mm -hmm. I don't think most people can imagine making more than double what they do right now. Right. I agree. Yeah. I agree. I know I talk a lot about respect in the green. I did a whole Joey Garrity's part of the Be Livers community also. And I was yeah, at yeah. the show and, and she's like, Aaron, you have to talk about respect in the green. <laughs> well, there you go. That's fantastic. Um, I think I might have found my next guest for one of my shows next week. Aaron. Me? Yeah. When are we talking, David? Um, well, I do my, my local show that I'm, I'm trying to add. I have three guests every week and I'm trying to add one international guest as one of those three every week. So uh, Monday's at th between 3.30 and 4.30. So cool. I'll reach out to you. Aaron, I'll, reach out, I'll reach out to you after done, this and we'll set it up. Cool. You've just done what I, what I encourage people to do all the time yeah. is never pass up an opportunity to be on someone else's show. Amen. Raise your hand. Leaders go first. You know, <laughs> Leaders go first, people. If you think sure. you're a leader, raise your hand. Say, I'll do that. I don't know how I'm going to do that, but I'm going to do that. I want in. Didn't know how to do yep. a show. Just do it. Just do it. <laughs> yeah. I think Nike Nike used to have that saying and they got rid of it. I wonder if I can trademark that or if they still own it. Anyway. Right. Be like Nike and just do it. <laughs> yeah. Um, gotta run here. Uh Brazetti, thank you so much for being my co host today and talking about uh the Cape Town water crisis. Uh and Aaron, I'm so glad you decided to jump on. It's a pleasure to yeah. finally chat with you like this and uh, I'll be in touch with you soon. Beautiful. Um, I'll give you both I'll give you both uh, 15 second final words Brazetti starting with you. It's been awesome um, catching up with all of you today. Thank you for everyone who's watched us and joined us. Um, and I hope that you found some value in my water crisis stories. You can find me on Facebook um, as Brigetti.live, or you can find me on Twitter as Brigetti. You can also find me on Twitter, on Instagram, and on Facebook under the Cape Town Water Crisis. Awesome. Have an awesome day further, everyone. Thanks, Brigetti. Aaron, you get uh, well. I get final words, but you get, get guest final, final words. words. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take I'll take twelve seconds. Yeah, sure. I go live every Tuesday and Thursday on the Aaron Strayer Show, which it's all about uplifting and leveraging amazing female entrepreneurs who are out in the world doing things just a little bit differently. So if that's something that lights people up, come on over and see me at the Aaron Strayer Show. Um, reach out to me. Let's Thanks make the world much. bigger. Thanks for having Ladies, me. Ladies, please please take the time to uh, come over to the page and and post your links in, in the comments below so people can see that. I welcome that for sure. And thanks to all of you who joined here today, whether you're live, if you're live and you're still watching, type 10 in the comments below. We want you to give us a 10 for having fun here today. And uh, if you're watching a replay, you can type 10 too if you want, but type replay, type something so we know that you're out there. I'll be broadcasting later today, 3.30 this afternoon. I have three wonderful guests. A musical guest that will be joining us here at Blue Water Border Fest, Leah. Le 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 and I'm going to have a couple of local guests here. We're going to be talking theater and Crime Stoppers. How about that? We'll talk to you later wow. this afternoon, everybody. Bye-bye for now. Take care of each other.